All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 27th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2023. And I want to revisit an event that took place four years ago. And not quite to this day, but, you know, next, the first week of next month, it will be four years. And some interesting things happened at the end of 2019, didn't they? Now, most of uh, evangelicalism, broadly speaking, Bible-believing Christianity, born-again Christianity, which is what evangelicalism is, uh, those who have been born again through faith in Jesus Christ, truly born again, a new creation in Christ, not, not just a system of doctrine, but a reality that God has begotten us in Christ. And we are, have a new spirit and a new heart, but we're still stuck in this old flesh in which sin is dwell, uh, dwells for now. Temporary condition. But we're, we await the redemption of our body. If you're born again. If you're not born again, you've got a system of religion that's perhaps called Christianity. And a system of doctrine that's, that's not all false, but a system of doctrine isn't the same as having that relationship with God that he gives uh, and the fact that he saves you. See, unless you've been saved by God, you haven't been saved. Uh, you're not in, you, as Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit of God. He must do it. It's not something man can do. It's something only God can do. Uh, you can't make yourself saved. No, it's, it's in God's hands. He has to call you and you have to respond. But it's, it's when, we, when we come to true faith in Christ, he does a work in us that is uh, that transform fundamentally transforms us. Again, we still live in this exterior shell in which sin dwells. So, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, if you think Christians are inconsistent, born again Christians are inconsistent, and sometimes he, uh, you can might think they're hypocrites. Yeah, it's true. But it's because of that internal inconsistency. If you're not born again, you're just a sinner through and through. There is no struggle in you. A born-again Christian has a struggle between the new nature and the old nature, between the spirit and the flesh. That's an ongoing situation. And that's one of the reasons we, we await the return of Christ or are returning to God one way or the other, uh, because we will be delivered from this body of death in which sin dwells. So. And when Christ returns, we get a brand new body, a glorified body, and we'll be like him. Now, which is much better. To... Now, people that are in heaven right now, they don't have that. The resurrection hasn't occurred. They don't have a glorified body yet. They don't have this old body either, but they don't have a glorified body either. Uh, that's what we await. They await it, and we await it. So here, Jesus writes something. Now, when, let's look at this right away. Uh, in Matthew 24, verse 15, he says, When you see the abomination of desolation, that's something that's so offensive to God, it makes things desolate, empty. makes it into a wasteland spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Now, this is not, Jesus' words here do not indicate the holy of holies of the temple, the, 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 the naos of, of God. Uh, Paul uses that expression the, 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 for the church. 
but the, the holy place, uh, why Jesus says it this way, I, I, I don't want to speculate, but I just want to make out this is not the, the uh, common expression for the, 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 the holy of holies in the temple, which was still standing when he said this. But then there's this parenthesis that's present in, I believe, all three of the synoptic gospels. Uh, John doesn't mention this uh, at all. So, but whoever reads, let him understand. In other words, there's something, the way I take it is, there's something to understand about this that's not simply by looking at what Daniel says. In other words, it's not straightforward. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let him who is in, in the housetop not go down and take anything out of, out of his house. Now in 70 A.D., uh, Jesus was answering two questions from his disciples here. His disciples asked him, he, Jesus said the temple was going to be uh, torn down and not one stone remaining uh, on another. And they asked him, when will this be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Two questions. They might have thought it was one question, but it was two. We know that because the end of the age has not come yet. But the temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. Uh, and the Christians there, because I think in perhaps in uh, Luke, or, or Luke or Mark, it says, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, flee. And that's exactly what happened. The Romans came, there was a Jewish revolt, and the, uh, the Christians weren't involved in the revolt. No, Christians don't involve themselves in those things. Christians, you don't involve yourself in revolutions. No. No, no, no. We follow what Jesus told us to do. And if you don't want to do that, well, he's not really your Lord, is he? So, uh, anyway, the, uh, the Romans came to lay siege to Jerusalem, the capital, to put down the rebellion. They'd already come through uh, the northern part of the country doing their thing up there. And they'd come down to lay siege to Jerusalem to, to basically finish the war. <clears throat> and what happened was, while they were doing that, there was a rebellion over on the coast at Joppa. Uh, somebody had killed some uh, Roman officers, I believe. And so the army left uh, Titus and... Uh, um, Vespasian, who was Titus's father, uh, left to put down that revolt. And while they had gone to, did, to do that, the Christians realized that what Jesus had warned about was taking place, and so they'd all left. All the Christians left Jerusalem while the Romans were away. And then the Romans came back, and then it was too late. And the siege of Jerusalem was an awful, awful, awful thing. And it ended up with the, mostly from the warring factions within the city. There were multiple different sects of zealots, which were revolutionaries uh, and, and terrorists. And they were fighting with each other. And eventually they ended up burning their own food supplies in order to apparently uh, to make sure that everybody, you know, uh, fought to the end. In other words, we're, we're going to get hungry, and so they're going to. You only got a, a, a little bit of time. You got to do it now. We burned your food. Yeah, this insanity, insanity. And uh, it was so bad that, according to Josephus, who was an eyewitness of this, he said that uh, it was either Vespasian at this point or Titus. Uh, Vespasian ends up going back to Rome because the emperor there dies, and he goes back to uh, to become emperor. And uh, the, um, Josephus had prophesied that, which is why Josephus wasn't dead. He was had been captured by the Romans. Uh, he was a a leader of the uh, some of the rebels, and uh, but when he prophesied that. Vespasian would become emperor. Vespasian decided to save his life and keep him around. So he became the, uh, the historian of us, and he, he wrote a large chronicle of not only this, but Jewish history called The War of the Jews. Uh, it's about this thick. Uh, now here, uh, 
But anyway, uh, back on the subject here, so that's what happened in 70 AD, and the temple indeed was torn down. It was, uh, according to Josephus, Titus, uh, the commander on the scene at the time, wanted to spare the temple, but a fire broke out, and uh, the the, uh, the forces, uh, the rebel forces in the city, had retreated into the temple as their last stronghold. Uh, of course, it was a walled compound, and it was their their last uh, last place of resistance. And in the fighting over that, a fire broke out in the temple itself and uh, consumed uh, big enough that uh, fire that the the gold that uh, was on the uh, surface of the temple on the outside, apparently covered with gold leaf or something like that, melted and the gold flowed down into the cracks between the stones. And so afterwards, the uh, soldiers and stuff literally pried the stones one from another in order to get the melted gold out. At least that's just the story that's uh, that's recounted. Uh, but according to Josephus, which was an eyewitness, his, his testimony was that uh, Titus uh, not only didn't want to destroy the temple, but the, 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 the consequences of, he, he says that Titus cried out to God, this is not my doing because the the consequences of the siege were so terrible it shocked even him uh the the wrath of god upon the the jewish people was just terrible just awful and so that might be the days uh the period of tribulation that jesus was talking to that might have been worse than will ever take place perhaps just it might be something where it's coming. I hope not. But, but here, uh, when he's talking about the abomination of desolation, uh, I saw this thing happening four years ago uh, with uh, Francis and his uh, Amazonian synod that he had uh, set up. Hopefully this will work this time. Now, this is a uh, official Vatican News video. YouTube, I'm using this under American copyright laws. This is for the purpose of commentary. On an event, a news event, and it's important to document from official source what was going on there. And this is from the Vatican. It's probably still up on their website. Vatican News, okay? So what you see here, this is the opening frame, at least in my clip of the of the video, which was dated October 7th. My timestamp is October 7th. So this took place maybe a day or two before that, perhaps. Uh, might have been the f fourth? I don't know. Anyway, this is a Pachamama. If you've heard of Pachamama, the idols that Francis brought into St. Peter's, this is the Holy Canoe. This is from the Amazon, uh, Amazonian uh, area. Uh, Pachamama is a local deity, or actually it's not local because Pachamama is probably the original pagan idol. Uh, Pachamama is Mother Earth. And uh, many Catholics apparently saw this and they thought, oh, this is some uh, primitive... Uh, 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 carving of the Virgin Mary because you've got a naked woman about to give birth uh, pregnant. This is uh, uh, apparently her womb here in red. But, no, Pachamama is not the Virgin Mary. Pachamama is Mother Earth giving birth to the Earth or to creation or whatever it is in their local myth. Uh, Pach, uh, Mother Earth is like the original de pagan deity. If you go back and look at pagan mythology, now so this is the 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 origin of what is, the origin of the Earth. Right there. So uh, actually, he there was about twelve, I think, of these things brought in, and this is this is in 
right here. We'll see in a moment. This is the, this is right in front of the high altar in St. Peter's, which is why it's like, how can you have more an abomination of desolation than this? Somebody that brings an obviously pagan idol into what the what the scripture says, the, the church. Now, as far as the world's concerned, Roman Catholicism is a church. It's the most obvious, it's the most visible. Uh, Bible believing, born again Christians, we are invisible. This this is the visible church. And fifty percent of the world's quote unquote Christians are Roman Catholics. Twenty five percent of Christians in the United States are Roman Catholics. The United States has one of the largest Roman Catholic uh, populations in the world. Even if they're not a majority, they're still the largest denomination in the United States is Roman Catholic, or Roman Catholic. So by far. So here, uh, th what we have here is Pope Francis brought the, this pagan idol in her canoe and all the uh, objects of worship, and priests and priestesses of this idol. Uh, shamans, shamans, uh, native uh, priests, you can say, and priestesses, shamanesses, into St. Peter's before the high altar, and they even put a ring on Francis's finger. So he, the, he fully approves of this, along with the entire hierarchy of the church, apparently, all the, all the, uh, uh, this is very clear in some other videos, the entire array, and you'll see it here, of, of cardinals and bishops in their, their proper headgear color. You can tell the difference between them. The cardinals are scarlet, cardinal colored, and the bishops are purple. So here, let's uh, play. I'm going to play about 12 minutes. This is a two-hour long video, but it, the initial part is what's right in front of the high altar. My Spanish is pretty poor, so. I can't get it all. But I did. When I can get something, I'll let you know what it is. Something about waters. See, the, the waters of the Amazon are holy, part of the holy nature religion down there. The, sort of like the river of life. And that's with Francis, too. I mean, he is he is pagan through and through, uh, as Laudato Si demonstrated. Just look up his own encyclical, Laudato Si, and see what this man is all about. It's not about Christ and him crucified. His... Uh, his ideas of Christ are, are pagan, New Age paganism. Now, he doesn't openly speak on some of it, but you sort of have to read between the lines. But if you're familiar with the stuff, yeah, it's de definitely what he's about. His whole uh, thing there was about a new world order, uh, a green world, a socialist green utopia. Well, of course, who's going to be in charge? <laughs> Of course, this is pagan chanting over and over and over again. This is exactly what they do in charismatic churches, too. This is not Christian music. This is pagan. So here you have a flock of cardinals. Oh, excuse me, bishops. The one on the extreme right of the frame is a cardinal, and there's one in the back. The others are bishops. The hierarchy of the church. Right there with it. Right there while they are worshiping these pagan idols. That's what they're doing. They're worshiping. And they did it in the garden, too, outside. Prior to this, there was a, a pagan ceremony and a tree planting, a planting a secret tree, in the Vatican Gardens. And Francis is right in the midst of it all. 
You see, they're, they're even this woman here is, is leading the uh, bishops and the cardinals in singing wor songs of worship to this pagan idol. And there's Francis right there in the midst of it all. Right here. Uh, El Papa. Some of them have a rather confused look on their faces, like, what are we doing? A little bit troubled look, some of them. Or is that, that because there's a camera recording it all? See, the purpose of repetitive music like this, just like it is in Hinduism, uh, the chanting, um, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, is to induce an altered state of consciousness. You turn your mind off. Your mind literally goes to sleep because it's got nothing stimulating it. Which is why they do this in charismatic and churches too. Is to induce a worship experience, an, uh, an altered state of consciousness, <clears throat> where you can experience the divine. But God does not say shut your brain off. He says you're supposed to worship Him with all your mind, soul, body, and strength. Mind has to be involved. If it's mindless worship, it is not acceptable to God. That's why we're not supposed to use mindless repetition like the pagans, Paul says. So here you got a good view of where this is taking place. You can see the high altar with uh, Berlinini, his pillars that are ca recycled pagan uh, horses, I think. Uh, great bronze horses that they recycled and cast the pillars of God's, supposedly God's altar with that. Uh, let's see what else is in there. Now, yeah. that this this is the center of the uh, of Saint Peter's. This is the center of focus of everything right here, the high altar. This is a massively large structure, too, by the way, huge. But this is this is not done off on some side uh, someplace. This is right in front. See, if if this is God's altar where that's supposed to be representative of where the mass takes place, where where the crucified Christ, uh, Jesus said, "Do this in remembrance of me." But in their theology, the bread and the wine actually becomes the living Christ uh, by the words of incantation of the priest, and then he is. Uh, uh, sacrificed a new sort of. I want to qualify that because they they have their own way of expressing it, representing uh, the crucified Christ to God. Well, God, Christ only did that once. It's not repeatable. It was finished. But in Roman Catholic theology, the uh, the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper is a true sacrifice. And so they don't really believe the testimony of the scripture. So they're re they're representing the crucified Christ to the Father every time they do the Mass. And the reason and, and they have to be very careful how they handle the uh, why the laity don't get the cup is because they don't want to spill the blood of Christ all over the place. If somebody if that happens is a really big issue. Or the, the bread that they put that in a monstrance, the, the sun-shaped thing with the window in it, for people to worship. Because that is, according to the theology, Christ himself. He just looks like bread. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Aristotle, for your <laughs> metaphysics. Nonsense. Nonsense. Uh, that's not what Jesus meant. That is not. You worship God's spirit and truth, not like this. But this is, of course, the Vatican itself. Uh, this is, uh, I shouldn't say Vatican. St. Peter's itself is a monument uh, to glorify the papacy. 
not Christ, the papacy. Just like the, uh, the Capitol building in Washington. Why do they have that rather than some utilitarian large building? To impress people. But when you find out what actually goes on there, it's not very impressive anymore. But this is, so this is where what my point is here, without the digression, is this thing is not taking place over in some side show place. This is in front of the entire uh, hierarchy of the church, uh, or at least all that were willing to show up, and right in front of the high altar, where Christ and Christ crucified is remembered. Which is a proper theology. So th this is, how is this not an abomination that makes desolate? How can you not? You bring a pagan idol, a a real pagan, not not a Christian representation of a saint or Mary or Jesus, but a true pagan idol, of a pagan deity. That's an utter offense to God in front of the high altar in what is supposed to be the one true church. And you do this right in the sight of God. How is this not an abomination that makes desolate? Okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, here, okay, here, here we got Francis coming out and 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 doing this here. Again, this is in front of the high altar, as you can see as they draw back, right up at the steps. This is where these idols are, or this particular copy and canoe, and the pagans. See this this over here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Uh, we just changed scenes. See this is uh, pagan uh, shamanesses and shamans are here. Here it's one right here. Uh, chanting and shaking her rattle, which is all part of their religion system. And this is what Francis has brought in. That he's, he's treating this as these are Christians. He's saying this is this is no different than what we do here. This is completely compatible with, with uh, Roman Catholicism, the history of Rome. This has never been done. To my knowledge, there's something like this. Okay, now they're going to bring in the traditional music. There's something, something like this has never been done in St. Peter's, to my knowledge. I mean, there's, there's certainly idolatry present, the, worship, the use of images in worship. But... This is worshiping a pagan deity. That's clearly a pagan deity. An imparted pagan deity. Th this is bringing Dagon into the house of God and setting Dagon before uh, the, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant rather than the other way around. Uh, the fish god. Th this is... This is uh, I'm incredulous. Four years later, I'm still incredulous. And about how how many Christians outside of Roman Catholicism even noticed what was going on? Or even now, four years later, are aware that this took place? Now, see, now see this is worship. They are worshiping before this idol as if it were God. Talk about Aaron's golden calf. They are treating this Pachamama as if it's God. This is not worshiping in spirit and truth either, by the way. All these people look bored. Again, we've got cardinals and bishops. Cardinals and bishops. 
um, Franciscan monk. Very bored looking people. See, they're, they're, they're right, they're singing these praises right in front. Do you notice this? Who are they looking to? They're looking to the Pachamama. Do you see where they are? See who they're facing? This pagan idol, Mother Earth idol. If I'm not mistaken, they've actually turned their back on the altar of Christ because that's what it represents. His, his uh, sacrifice on the cross, that's what the high altar represents. In any um, traditional, uh, uh, in Lutheranism, in Anglicanism, the altar represents the cross, Christ's sacrifice. <sighs> I, my Latin is so bad. I, but that, of course, this is a traditional thing, I think. So somebody else knows out there. Oh, this is all programmed out, too. You know, they're, they're, they're singing off a published sheet there. Yeah, give me a shot so I can see the angle. Come on, go back wide. Uh, there's a pagan shaman, right? shamaness right there in her uh, Amazonian attire. They probably don't actually dress like that in the Amazon, but this is stagecraft. Uh, and she looks like really, she's really happy about all this, too. Were all these people cajoled into doing this, or what? Yeah, like Lord Satan is making them all do it. <laughs> she's not a Roman Catholic. Okay, here. Are we? Yes, we are. We are in front of, this is, they have turned. Francis and his entourage has turned their back on the altar of Christ, and they're worshiping before the, uh, the Pachamama and her holy canoe. What can you say? Don't they all look like they're just going through the motions? This is like dead church. <laughs> Clearly dead. Ah, oh, now here you, you have a shaman right here uh, with his face painted red, uh, wearing his traditional attire. Probably not what he wears day to day. All for the purposes of Vatican stagecraft. See, this is all in support of Laudato Si, apparently. The one world religion uniting everything in the green new church. The green socialist new church. And of course, who has a global organization that's ready to take up the reins? Not the United Nations. Hey, is that why they're waging war on Russia? Because Russia's Orthodox rather than Roman Catholic? Is that why Francis has got the entire West waging war? And that good Catholic uh, Joe Biden waging war on Russia today and Ukraine? Is there really 
See, the, the, the dispute between orthodoxy and Rome goes back a thousand years. Still not resolved. Orthodoxy has not come and bowed down before the Pope, so it hasn't been resolved. If I could clearly understand what they're saying, that they something about the sun in there, I believe, filio. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Someone probably is familiar with exactly what they're singing. What is that? Is that a, a, a new image of Mary on the left there of the altar? They've got really weird postmodernist art in the Vatican. It looks a lot of it looks very satanic. Again, see here here we have a shot that, that definitely shows where this is happening. In front of the high altar with the Pope and his entourage with their back to the altar of Christ. With their back to the cross. Worshiping Mother Earth in her canoe. Wow. Let me skip ahead a little bit because this gets sort of boring. Okay, now what's going to... Okay, here, here's what's going to happen is now they're all going to leave in procession from this location in St. Peter's and proceed out to the plaza. Vamos a comenzar a cantar. Pedimos por favor que los padres sinodales vayan adelante. Okay, so what he just said was uh, uh, now we're going to begin to sing and uh, and go in procession um, with the Pope and his and the magisterium uh, in the front, uh, of course, with the pagan idol. And then the common people, he hadn't said that yet, but that's what he says, the common people coming up behind. Luego los miembros de la asamblea del sínodo y luego los miembros de la casa común con esta canoa, cuidado por favor. Yeah, followed by the, the, the common people. Pedimos a nuestro coro para comenzar nuestros cantos. Yeah, begin to sing the songs, the cantos. So they're going to proceed in musical uh, uh, parade, uh, carrying the Pachamama. The, the hierarchy of the, of the Catholic Church with the Pope in the immediate uh, presence of the Pachamama, they're going to leave the altar of Christ and the Church of Christ and proceed out into the world. How lovely. I don't know what they're saying. It might not even be Spanish. It might be uh, uh, Portuguese or uh, native dialect. Okay, that one I did get. Uh, in the Vatican, they use Spanish more often than they use Latin now. The Eos de la Salva, uh, 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 the the children or the sons of the of the uh, forest. And the I think that was the Ihas, the daughters. So the sons of the forest, the males were saying, uh, are coming to you, O Lord. I have to remember to switch that because going, literally going in Spanish, but English we do it backwards, are coming to you, O Lord. And then the other is the the daughters of the forest are coming to you, O Lord. Los niños y su but they're leaving Christ. They're not coming to the Lord at all. They're coming to another Lord. 
carrying in procession the idols of that Lord. What Lord is that? The God of this age. Sus madres, los hombres y sus brazos, las luchas y sudores te alaban, Señor. Los pobres y olvidados con ansias de ser libres, luchando en esperanza te alaban, Señor. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Las hijas de la yeah, it is hijos and hijas. So, yes. The rest of it I didn't get. Selva te alabamos, Señor. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. So they're going out from... The symbolism of this is is crazy. Crazy uh, and true. The symbol... They have, have turned their back on Christ and the altar that represents his crucified his crucifixion for the sins of the world. That's a high altar. That's what it is. You might not understand the symbolism, but that's what it is. That's, that's the altar where his, his atoning death is continually represented to the Father. They think. It's a one-time thing, but that's what, that's what the whole priesthood exists for. The sacramental system, it is, uh, see, it's its not the one-time death. It has to be on and on and on and on and on. And Protestantism has not completely purged itself of these things. Uh, there generally is an altar in a Protestant church, a, a traditional Lutheran, Anglican, maybe not Reformed, I don't know. And some Lutherans, I was rather shocked to even see processions with images, uh, crucifix with Christ on the cross. Well, that's a particular a Missouri Synod. Uh, the Lutheran church I grew up in didn't permit that. They said Christ is no longer on the cross. But then they become the ELCA, so they... They have done the same thing as this. They have left Christ to go out to the world. That's exactly what they're doing here. In their, in their thing is they've turned their back on Christ and are worshiping Pachamama, the Pope and his cardinals and his bishops and the rest of the people. And then they're, found, they're leaving the altar of Christ, the cross of Christ, to go out into the world carrying their pagan idol of Mother Earth. This is, this, is, this is not accidental. This is all scripted. This is all Francis. This is what he wants. Do you understand? He is an antichrist, the, the most antichrist of all popes. Conservative Catholics who I pray will become born again. I, I am sympathetic with their cause, put it that way, as far as this, that this is an abomination. They just need to start reading the Bible and find out more about Jesus Christ and get into that kind of relationship with him where you don't need a, a phony sacrifice. Christ was sacrificed once for all. It's done. It's finished. You, you don't need to represent that. What you do at the at at communion is you remember his finished work. You don't see he he atoned for all sins for all time. Not just just for past sins for all sins. And by being in him, you are partaker of that atonement. If you reject him, you have no atonement. You are still in your sins. And the worst sin is rejecting God's salvation. That's what makes him really angry. Because he has provided a salvation that's sufficient for all. And those that refuse it or are indifferent to it or they're without excuse. They know he exists. 
But this is, if this is not the abomination of desolation that Jesus is referring to, well, it's certainly a lot like it. Because it actually did make the Vatican desolate. One month later, the first known case of COVID-19 arose. And within a couple months, do you remember? Within a couple months, the Vatican was shut down. The, the square that they're parading to was closed. Worship services in the Vatican were closed to the public, to Catholics. Catholic churches around the world cut off much of their worship. Stopped having daily mass, for example. The Catholic Church was left desolate. See, for a Catholic, without the Mass, there's no purpose for the Church. I, I've seen, I remember one time I visited a, a, a little Catholic Church uh, uh, in, in Mission, Texas. A little one there. I said, um, went there early, and it was, they had like a daily Mass. Okay, I'll go and see this, check this thing out. So I went there, and that day that they had a, a snafu, and they didn't actually have the, 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 they ran out of wine or something, you know, they didn't get their, their order in on time. And uh, so the, the priest got up, and he announced, well, we're not going to actually have mass this morning because uh, we don't have such and such. And a, a, a number of the people just stood up and walked out. But, hey, no mass, there's no reason for me to be here. See, for them, uh, you partake of salvation by t partaking of the, the bread. Literally, you're eating Christ. Literally. In their doctrine. Um, uh, a means of grace. Say. So you get, uh, bought through the sacraments of the church, is where you find, you get your access to the uh, sacrifice of Christ. Through the salvation that's in Christ. But it has to be through the sacraments of the church, not directly. I just bypass them. I just go directly. Yeah, see, I'm I'm saved by God Himself, not by some Catholic priest. But uh, and I make my confessions directly to Him. Uh, I have conversations with Him on a regular basis. Don't you? You should. But here, this is this is uh, just profoundly. Uh, reminiscent of the abomination of desolation. And again, it did actually make the Vatican desolate, made St. Peter's desolate, made Roman Catholicism globally desolate with the lockdown. Did it not? And of course, the world rejoiced in that because, hey, we can close all these Christian churches now. They, they kept a lot of things open. I like the liquor stores. I'm sure the marijuana dispensaries were, were uh, protected too. But what did they try to do? Shut down the, the churches. Now, singing in church is probably a good way to spread that virus, but Christians should have enough wisdom. True Christians should have enough wisdom and know how to uh, work around that are consistent with loving the brethren and uh, not uh, uh, being rebels against government. There's always alternatives. We, we have the mind of Christ. You mean, you mean we can't figure some of this stuff out? Of course we can. Just some people uh, are simply non-regenerate rebels and they would rather just use the opportunity to to justify revolt. That's like those people in Washington that got, got arrested. And then, I'm not sympathetic with them. They're not Christians. Pre people that preach uh, about, you know, I have to say this. Sometimes I, I criticize the uh, what goes on at the church I'm attending now. I'm not a member there, but uh, hopefully I do it in such a way that it, it is uh, 
the purpose of what I, uh, criticism is not to tear it down, but to say, hey, these things should be could be better. Uh, but I haven't heard a word of politics from the short time I've been attending there. Thank God for that. Because Jesus Christ is not about the politics of this world. He's coming to get rid of the politics of this world. Yeah, there will be a new world order. It will be his world order. And there will be a great reset. His great reset. And all these uh, his enemies out there, which will gather the armies of the world to wage war against him, we are going to lose really fast and really big time. So, but uh, this is, uh, again, if this is not the abomination Jesus was talking about, it certainly is an abomination that makes desolate. Roman Catholics, I don't hate you. I love you. I want you to be saved in truth. I want you to know Christ and to know the fullness of his salvation, not just in types and shadows and, and not governed by these pagan antichrists, because that's what they are. They are, an anti, they are against Christ, against Christ's gospel, his true gospel, that he provides freely to whoever will call upon him for salvation. He will answer you. But if you try to do it man's way, you won't get to God. You have to do it God's way. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him for salvation. Believing that Christ died for your sins. It's accomplished. It's finished. Just believe that. Believe, trust in him. He is eternal life. And he will transform your life. You won't be perfect in this world, but you won't be like one of these people down here wearing the funny colored beanies. Let's see, is there an interesting... Okay, let me bring it ahead. So you get some other shots from this. Now, this entire video is two hours and four minutes long. So, again, you might be able to still find this on the Vatican News website in their archives. See, again, here we have, this is a, an overhead shot. You have the pagans preceding Francis in procession. Right here, you got pagans back uh, here. Uh, palms? Palm branches? Really? Palm branches? You mean like Palm Sunday palm branches? And here's here's a shaman. Oh, you can't see it because I don't click. I haven't clicked it on over here, have I? Okay, here. See, here you have Francis, shaman, uh, shaman, shamanesses over here at his side, and on this side. And someplace here, they're carrying the Pachamama uh, on their shoulders. And th this is with the hierarchy of the church in the front. And they're, they're, they're walking out of, of what's supposed to be the Church of, of, of Christ, a building that represents that, into the world. Turn, having turned their back on the altar of Christ, they're, they're carrying their new God with them, or goddess. This is what Francis wants. This is what Francis carefully orchestrated for the cameras, apparently. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. So they're going to the Lord outside. See, Catholics should listen to their own doctrine. Outside the church, there is no salvation, which is a truism. It's just that Roman Catholicism is not the true church. That's the problem. But here, see, they are leaving the Church of Christ, what's supposed to represent that. They have turned their back on his sacrifice, 
his cross, and they're, they are proceeding with their new god, goddess, out into the world. Oh, the symbolism is so ripe with meaning. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos. Yeah, the, the sons and daughters of, this, of the, uh, the jungle or the, the forest are, are going to you, are coming to you, O oh Lord. Well, that Lord is not the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, okay, this is out in front, watching the procession come out of St. Peter's. Uh, so you have a, a person carrying the uh, cross, an acolyte, um, in front of the pagan goddess. You know, I'm, I'm shocked looking at this video how bored all these people look. Dead. Zombies. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Well, there's a wide shot. Las hijas de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Las aguas de los ríos, las aguas de las lluvias. The, the waters of the river and the waters of the floods, is that? I'm not sure. Las aguas de las cochas te alaban, Señor. Okay, uh, I did get the waters of the river. Are coming to you, O Lord. La luz del nuevo día, el sol que nos alumbra, los vientos y calores te alaban, Señor. Now they're singing about light. The loose. Ugh. This, 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 this is an abomination that makes desolate. This is an abomination that makes desolate. I don't know if it is the abomination, but it is. There is a really big curse on all those who participated on this. These people are... Uh, where does the Pope go for confession? He, he, oh, he has a private confessor. But uh, would he admit this is sin? No, he's unrepentant. Wow. Los frutos y las flores, los árboles y el monte, la tierra que es fecunda te alaban, Señor. Singing about the flowers and the fruits and the mountains. None of this is about Christ. This is about creation. This is creation worship. Creation worship. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely nothing in this about Jesus Christ. This is pagan nature worship. And it is Francis and the Roman Catholic hierarchy that's engaging in this. They have rejected Christ for pagan nature worship. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Las hijas de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. <sighs> okay, here comes the slogans of Francis. Uh, integral ecology. In other words, uh, ecology woven into everything. Integrated into all of life. In other words, it's, uh, you will be part of it. You will be absorbed. It took me a while to figure out what he's talking about. niños y sus madres, los hombres y sus brazos, las luces. Sombres, uh, the shades of the... Los y sudores te alaban, Señor. Los pobres y olvidados con... The, the poor. Con ansias de ser libres, luchando en esperanza, te alaban, Señor. I see, these, these are some more pagan shamans and shamanesses here, uh, carrying uh, uh, 
posters printed by uh, the Pope promoting his policies. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Las hijas de la selva. I believe these people actually have no idea what's going on, and they were simply imported by Francis as stagecraft, as props. Just like American presidents use military for props. I have no idea who that one individual was that was nameless. Ah, somebody's got his hand knocked off. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna scan ahead quickly here. Okay, now they engage in some stuff out here. They go into a different building, and. Uh, so, the, the, again, this whole thing is two hours long. Uh, Fr uh, Pope Francis, the opening of the Synod. That's the Amazonian Synod. Uh, you could go, probably go to Vatican News and uh, search on Amazonian Synod and see these videos and watch them firsthand for yourself. There's a whole bunch of other things, including promo videos. Uh, th this is this is the uh, the the most antichrist of all popes. He wants to destroy all remembrance of Christ and the cross. His Christ is not the Christ of the Bible. Now to my uh, to to Roman Catholics, traditional Roman Catholicism uh, that the theology of Christ is correct. It's just that the uh, hierarchy has interposed themselves between you and him. What the church says about Christ is not wrong. What the Roman Catholic Church says about how you partake in Christ is wrong. Call upon him, and he will save you. Your church can't do it. They can't save themselves from the most vile of affections as we have been exposed to for decades now. Do not believe the lies that they that you can't be saved without them. It could be you can't be saved with them. Call upon God. Call upon Jesus Christ. Because the scripture promises that all who call upon him shall be saved. You have to call upon him to be saved. Try it. It works. Don't listen to the voice of Antichrist. There's too many of them running around now. 